Hi everyone, this is John with Homeroom Studios at homeroomstudios.com. Today I'm going to be showing you grouping in Pro Tools. Um, I touched on grouping a little bit in my buses and aux sends video. Now I'm going to go back and go a little more in depth of what grouping is and how to create groups. So, let's jump into it. Here's my session. I got a lot of tracks. I got my drums, guitars, bass, vocals. These tracks right here are all my drum tracks. Now, if I want to solo all my drums, just so I can hear the drums, I have to go through, let's bring my mix window over here, I'd have to go through and solo each individual drum until my drums were then soloed. And then if I want to unsolo them, I have to go back and click each solo button. And that gets tedious. So, you want to create groups. Um, if you're familiar with analog consoles and other maybe digital consoles there's grouping functions which allows you to take all the tracks and link them together we're gonna take that same concept and apply it to Pro Tools um, and it works very much the same way so we're gonna group our drums right down here in the left hand corner is your groups pane now this all group with an exclamation mark is a default when you click it it gets grayed out and that means that the group is on and if you saw up here this little tab on each of your channels is your groups tab it shows you which groups that track belongs to so you can have a track belong to more than one group it's very possible in fact it's very common to have a drum group and then maybe a subgroup for your overheads maybe a subgroup for your two snares um, so that way the snares are linked, but then if you want, you can the drums are linked as a whole too. Um, very common to do. So let's create our group. Select your first drum track or your first track. Hold down Shift and select the last track, and it will select all those tracks for you. Um, once you select all the tracks that you want in your group, you can now click the drop-down arrow and click New Group. This is your group's pane. Let's go over this very quickly. Name is where you name the group. We're going to name it Drums, if I can spell it right. There we go. ID is where you assign what letter you want it to be. I usually just let Pro Tools label it however, however, however they want. Um, Pro Tools does order the groups in numer in a sequential order. So if you do make a group later on and you want it to be higher up in the group list, you can assign it a um, earlier letter and it will assign it earlier in the groups list. All right, type, edit, mix, edit, and mix. The default it goes to is edit and mix. You can change that in preferences for Pro Tools. You can, in the groups area, you can change what you want your default group to be, what you want your defaults, um, group settings over here to be. Very cool. Basically, this area over here is when you have groups, they work differently in the edit window than they do in the mix window. For instance, in the mix window, it will link your channels, it'll link all their faders, it'll link the solos, it'll link the mutes. Um, but in the edit window, it will link edits that you make to it. So if you select a track, it'll select all the tracks. If you make, if you split a region, it'll split that same spot down across all the tracks. And I will show you that once we get our group set up. Over here is what you want linked within the groups. Um, I have it set to mutes and solos. If you just want it to be a mute group, uh, a lot of analog consoles or digital consoles allow you to create mute groups and solo groups. Um, this is where you would do that. If you just want it to be a mute group, you do that. I'll have it set to both. And over here are all your tracks, and here's what's in the group. If you have a track in here that you don't want in the group anymore, highlight it, click remove, and vice versa. If you create a new track or something and you want to add it to the group, highlight it and click add. Very simple, very straightforward. Uh, so everything looks good here. Click OK, and your group will be created. Look down here, and you see drums. It automatically turns it on for you. So you can go ahead and start using it. Let's turn off the all group. And as you can see, drums now shows across all our drum tracks that are in the group. 
So if we turn it off, now there's no groups. If we turn it on, boom. Um, these aren't effective because they're not in the group. If you click any one of these drop down menus, you'll see that it shows in gray the groups that it's a part of, and then all the tracks within that group, um, what the group consists of, you know, solos and mutes, volume, and then it allows you to modify, duplicate, and delete the group. Very cool. So you can modify groups from any one of the tracks. You can also modify it from over here. Let's take a look at what this just did to our tracks. Um, let's say we're listening to our song and it's playing and we want to solo just the drums. Well, click any one of the solo buttons and boom, the drums, just the drums are soloed. You no longer have to go through and click every single solo button and vice versa. You click any one of the solo buttons and it turns off and it works with the mutes and it works with the faders. That's what grouping in the mix window does. Now let's move to the edit window. So here's all our drum tracks. You select anywhere within those grouped tracks and the cursor will span the entire width of all those tracks. Pretty cool. Um, you can select and it'll select all those tracks. You can also split the region and it'll split it in the same spot for all those tracks. This comes in handy when you're making edits, when you're quantizing drums or when you're quantizing guitars to the drums and you know lining things up and you have multiple mics on that instrument. Well, you're you're going to want to have the edit in the same spot if you're editing multiple multiple tracks for the same instrument. So grouping allows you to make smooth edits across all those tracks in the same spot and lets you do your crossfades and everything else. Looping. Um, also in the edit window, your what's linked is your track height. So as I adjust the track height, it does it for all the tracks. As I adjust, um, you know, every, a lot of other things. Uh, let's see, the wave, the the view. I want to view my volume envelope. It does it for all of them. So now I can see the volume envelope for all my drum tracks. And I can edit automation and it mirrors it across all the tracks. Okay, I create an edit point in my automation and it creates it across all my tracks. And it writes the automation across all of them. Very cool when you're writing automation for a, group, a set of tracks and you want want them to automate together. You don't have to sit there and copy the automation into every track. You do it with one of them and it automatically does it to the other. Let's go back to waveform view and boom, switches. What also is linked is this little drop down menu. You can add different automation panes and edit them, the mutes, anything. Also linked is the automation selection. selection. You want to go to Latch, it sets it to all your drum tracks. Also linked is your um, playlist. You create a new take, it'll do it for all of them. You go back to a previous take, it'll go back to the same previous take for all the tracks. You want to duplicate, it duplicates it, duplicates all the tracks. Very cool when you're tracking drums and you have to create a new take very quickly for the drummer. Uh, you don't want to sit there and go through, you know, 8 to 12 drum tracks and select new take, new take, new take, new take, new take, or duplicate, duplicate. You're going to punch them in somewhere and you have to duplicate. Create a drum group. The drummer does a take. He wants to do another take. Click one, click new, bam. Creates a new take. You can start recording. Saves time. And that is the basics of grouping. So play around with it. Practice. Um, take a session that you have start grouping some tracks, group some guitars, um, start messing around with what you can do and what groups allow you to do, and you'll find very soon that it's a very effective and very efficient way to mix, and it helps a lot. Um, so, once again, I'm John with Homeroom Studios at homeroomstudios.com. Uh, check out my blog. It's homeroomrecording.blogspot.com, and happy mixing.